So I'm uh, just going to say a few words by way of introduction to Mia. I have known Mia since the 1990s when she used to be our external examiner at my university. And during that time, I used to work on the English of her examiner's reports. I would just do a few little tweaks here and there uh, for, for the English language. And this is a relationship that has carried on over the last few decades, in fact. And so what I have been doing uh, most recently is working with Mia on the text of the Existential Wellbeing course, the online course that um, she has um, set up, which is a brilliant, brilliant online course. Um, and I think she will cover more of that material in her workshop on Sunday. But she is also, as you probably know, a, an emeritus professor at the University of Leuven. And she has many, many interesting ideas. And it's been a real privilege to me to uh, witness the evolution of her thinking in recent years from the existential wellbeing text to the lecture that she's now about to deliver. I think that Mia, with her understanding of psychology, of the person-centered approach, of the existential approach, has got a real sort of cutting-edge understanding of many things about grounded spirituality and so on. And I think that in this particular lecture, which I've also seen the text of, she brings ideas together in a really, really interesting way. So it feels to me it's a great privilege, Mia, that we have you here with us at this conference. And I hope that everybody else is going to enjoy the lecture as much as I have done. Thank you, Julie. Um, let me start by expressing my appreciation and gratitude towards the conference committee for your very welcoming atmosphere and your brilliant way of giving the space for this event to happen. Uh, in Belgium we have an expression, uh, living as God in France. I think here I feel like living as gods and goddesses in Greece. So. Uh, I really want to thank you for offering that opportunity. Well, um, as I'm not a native English speaker, I have prepared very well my text, uh, because I, I don't want to struggle too much with finding the right words. And I have also chosen uh, to make quite an extensive PowerPoint that you can read what I say, because sometimes my pronunciation wouldn't be uh, appropriate, or for, I know for myself when I'm, I'm, I'm in a lecture and being not native English, it's sometimes easier that they can read the words. So that's why I need quite an extensive text on my PowerPoint and I switched the nice gadgets <laughs> of uh, images and pictures and all those, these things. So that just, just as, as a way to support those who are not native. English speakers. Um, anyway, I want to express that this lecture somehow came to me as a kind of a gift. And uh, I didn't plan it, but it just came. And um, I want to share with you that experience. Um, before I, I start the lecture as I did prepare it. I, I want to start with a very small exercise, a very small <coughs> meditation form to give you some experience of living forward, how you can tap into that kind of uh, energy. And it's 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 a very small form of, you can call it meditation, you can call it exercise, you can call it whatever you want. Um, so it's just an invitation to um, give yourself a small kind of start. Okay. So, 
now. I hope you have some small experience <coughs> already of living forward. <laughs> Okay, um, I did write my whole lecture on living forward, and then I thought, what did Chantlin write about it? <laughs> and to my big surprise, I, I went to the on online library and gift in living forward, and it only showed up three times. <laughs> in all the writings of Chantley, and also the concept of life for energy, which is synonym, showed up only very few times. So I was <laughs> quite surprised, because of, oh, I'm giving a lecture about this, and Chantley didn't use the word hardly in all his publications. But the moment he used it, it was quite meaningful. Um, so I give you the quotes that are uh, in Gentlin's writings. If one's attitude is welcoming, even long fixated memories come as part of fresh living forward, rather than as constriction and stoppage. Another quote. It took me a long time to affirm that the ongoing bodily experiencing has its own inherent life forwarding implying. The little steps that arise at the edge are creative, imaginative, and always in some positive direction. And another quote, in bodily terms, help means anything that brings life forward energy. So, um, why have I chosen to zoom in on a theme about which Jensen did not say much explicitly. Well, um, I read in this words that life forward energy is about the potential to move forward in a positive direction and that the purpose of therapy or counseling is to touch that experiential layer awakening the vital energy that will direct healthy and creative development. <coughs> and um, I can sense that living forward has been of huge importance to the way of thinking, practicing and living of gentling. So. I had been practicing focusing over 40 years and during uh, this time I have more and more found myself getting in touch with important experiences for which I don't have sufficient words. So, um, and something resonates inside of me while reading certain passages of Gentlin's work. So, I thought, even when it is still unclear which words can best be used as handles. Just the search in itself for the right symbols in connection with the felt experience is already a carrying forward. And that was the creative joy I experienced when, when, I, when I was working on this lecture, just searching for uh, giving words to that experience. So, um, I am also a teacher, so I made up some structure. So, and in this lecture, I will deepen uh, four questions. I will deepen the question, how can we understand living forward? 
How can we come into contact with this living forward? How can we facilitate the helping process of working with life forward energy? And how can bodily felt contact with living forward open new perspectives on human development, healing and well-being? And of course, the answers to each of these questions will overlap with each other. And in addition to this, I will make it clear how Gentlin's approach implies several paradigm shifts in the Western way of thinking, acting and living. And that was also something quite surprising that, that came to me when I was developing this idea that I could see very clearly these huge paradigm shifts that Gentlin has introduced and often we are no more aware about the, the huge change he brought in the field of psychotherapy, philosophy, but also our whole way of thinking and living. So I want to make that explicit as well. And I um, will describe five huge paradigm shifts in Gentlin's approach. And finally, I will address how this can result in um, or how this opens the way for a multicultural existential well-being model in which the physical, the social, the personal and the spiritual aspects of human existence are intrinsically interwoven. So, let's start with this. The first question, how can we understand living forward? In human beings, living forward can be understood as the vital energy that arises from a stream of barely noticeable experiences. This preconceptual experience is inherent to life and is therefore almost impossible to express through words. It permeates the human body, much like it permeates every living organism. Living forward can result in new forms and creative expressions of the ongoing life force. The way in which living forward shapes the human organism has its own natural development. This process simply happens without us even noticing it or being aware of it. In Gentlin's words, it's the living bodies imply their own next steps. I have, uh, or I had, she, she, she died, uh, I had a, a colleague at the University of Leuven, my colleague Patricia de Martelaere, is a professor in philosophy and an uh, expert in Taoism. And uh, she refers to the Chinese concept of qi. And, and um, we discussed many times on these themes. And um, I discovered that key could be a perfect translation of living forward. Um, Patricia, she chooses not to translate the word because um, possible translations such as energy or life force can be vague and misleading. Uh, they do not grasp the specificity of Qi as the very basis of life, of everything and everyone. So, um, I found her descriptions of Qi, however, uh, exceptional, exceptionally interesting in the context of living forward. Because Qi is felt to be a life force given by nature. And Key is always moving. Key refers to everything that can be actualized. Sometimes the material side of key is more prominent, and sometimes the energetic side of key is more prominent. <clears throat> These aspects are just qualitatively different. So matter is key in a more solid form, while consciousness is the more ethereal form of key. 
and the one very remarkably, key is also translated as process because it describes reality in terms of processes and sees reality as fundamentally in motion, constantly changing and developing. Um, I did some study on other non-Western cultures and they have similar concepts to the Chinese key or even forward concept. Exploring the similarities uh, would be a very interesting journey in itself, so I had to restrict myself to not dwell on that here and now. Anyway, living forward always manifests itself in different ways, depending on the situation. And we notice these manifestations depending on how a specific social cultural context reveals different aspects of living forward. In the context of psychotherapy, gentling approaches a problem as a bodily felt process in which life forward energy has been kept from moving in its natural flow. And as you all know, living forward can be restored by welcoming the bodily felt sensations as a place to start, uh, as an opportunity to reflect on something that is pre-verbally pre expressed in this subtle experience. And when you start to notice the vague experience and make an effort to capture something of it, you will find a handle that enables you to open the door to the deeper felt layer of experience. This is stuff that I don't have to explain for these people. So, we know that experiencing a felt sense of how the situation affects you and the un further unfolding of the felt meaning are often associated with processes that gently called moving forward. At times also he describes it as tangible, visible shifts in how the body expresses this process of change. These are also moments in which living forward can be felt increasingly clearly. Um, I didn't plan to give an example when I made the lecture, but a very recent an example came that I just want to tell you as an example of these moments where the living forward can be felt increasingly clear by um, making contact with the felt sense. When I finished this lecture, I asked a good friend to read my lecture and I asked for her feedback. And she said to me, uh, Mia, the spiritual part of it I think that is too risky to speak about that. I think you better skip that. And I love that friend very much. So I took that feedback very seriously. Oh, should I rewrite my lecture? And very strange, um, the days after that feedback and my thinking, what shall I do with that? Um, there started a very severe arthritis in my left hand. And in my family, from generation to generation, the women had very severe arthritis. So, I am sensitive to this physical problem of severe arthritis. It, it, for my mother and my grandmother, they became even a very painful handicap. They couldn't use their left hand anymore. So I always thought of this as, oh, it's genetic. But I was struck that this became so painful and it was really awful. I went to the medical doctor and said, oh, it looks very you have to go to the hospital and uh, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, let me focus first on this. And I asked another good friend to, to have a focusing session. And I focused on 
this painful arthritis in my left hand. And as a big surprise came the stoppage. This left hand expressed a stoppage that was a huge conflict already for generations and generations. Like we, we, we women in the family, all of us have this rather um, female intuitivity. We, we have this potential of healing hands and none of us was allowed in the in rational dominant culture to give this the upper hand and to use this. It was the first time in my life that I could experience or oh, her feedback was Mia restrict yourself to the logical rational side. Don't take the risk to bring in the intuitive female left hand. It was the first time that I was really taken by surprise. Was, oh wow, this stoppage is expressed in this arthritis. It, it really came as, a, as a, a, a shift. And as you might expect, as you, I'm, I didn't expect it, but it was like that. After that focusing session, there was no more pain, and even the trans my hand, my hand transformed again. So the, the the handicap that was visible, very visible, disappeared. So for me, that's 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 a, a, a very powerful example of how the moving forward had come again. In, in that stoppage, and how the, the living forward could be felt increasingly clear after I made contact with, with the, the, the meaning of this bodily felt expression of the stoppage. So, um, the meaning of felt sense and living forward are, are very often interwoven. And, and yet, it feels particularly important to see them as different processes, each with its own dynamic. Because the awareness of life forward energy can be used as a helping process, distinguished from a felt sense process. So, by considering the process of contact with living forward as a different process from the unfolding of a felt sense, I have the experience that new roads are open to psychotherapy and to life in general. Before I explain the different approach, of starting with the experience of living forward, I want to highlight that the handling was a real game changer in the field of psychotherapy and philosophy. Without understanding that gentling altered the, the, the number of rules of the game, um, the experiential approach may provoke frustration and resistance. People tend to run into something of an obstacle which they may find difficult to pinpoint. So, the experiential approach implies several new steps. And I think it's very important that we as experiential uh, psychotherapists and counselors are very aware of these new steps. Because for us, they, they, they seem obvious, while for others, they, they react with resistance and frustration. So, the first paradigm shift is that I want to highlight that gentling really is breaking through the constrictive psychological framework in which the mind has the upper hand and gentling has paved the way to the body. That's a paradigm shift. So, I call
call this change, it's a change in mindset. I call this similar to the revolution in traditional physics. When relativity and quantum physics demonstrated that the usual principles of causality and the associated dualistic vision are simply untenable. Energy, which sometimes is called spirit in the humanities, permeates everything, and contemporary natural science proved that mass and energy are largely equivalent. Many people have not yet made this shift in their perception of reality and in their self-experiencing. And as a result, they are stuck in a mental route, finding it difficult to establish contact with the more subtle bodily felt energy. So this will be um, more this will be more fully explained in response to the next question. This was a a slide that I didn't show you, but I explained it. Okay? Can I go on to the next question? I see no card, why I need to uh, pose. <laughs> and no red card, so I'm happy. <laughs> um, where am I? Here. Okay. The, the second question, how can we come into contact with this moving forward? What are, what are possible openings to experiencing this life forward energy? The first contact is with your body. You focusing teachers, you, you know that. And um, it, this involves experiencing your body from the inside. I will go a little bit quicker now because this is for you known stuff. For young children, this is completely natural. They are their bodies <laughs> and various sensations moving from, the, from inside or to direct their actions. So like animals, plants and any number of microorganisms, their bodily felt senses are very much in tune with their immediate environment. So um, that contact begins to change when the body is seen and judged from the outside. Thinking about and judging the body may then overshadow feeling and experiencing the body from the inside. And contact with the life forward energy that can be felt from the inside becomes gradually attenuated and may even disappear entirely of their rudder over time. So, what I call the body's antennae, is that the right promise, antennae, no longer function. They no longer communicate anything. So a person no longer inhabits his or her body. And the person has withdrawn from his or her body and limits himself or herself to the mind. So when this contact with the body felt energy or the life forward energy is, uh, is where it is naturally expressed, that man that no longer exists, one method of re-establishing this contact may be to purposefully direct one's attention to bodily sensations and bodily felt process. Also this is known stuff for you. Um, this is what we try to do when with the, or invitation to focus. Um, here also I want to remark that in, in diverse non-Western cultures, much more importance is attached as a matter of course to bodily processes as part of personality development and as, as uh, to assist uh, expansion of consciousness. So we also know that the, the quality uh, of the attention uh, is very important and that, that makes the difference in what you experience. Um, it is the type of energy that de determines the type of movements in the organism. The organism may shrink, freeze, block um, when exposed to judgmental attention. 
and the organism can relax, open up, restore itself when confronted with friendly welcoming. That's what we do with the focusing attitude. So, uh, rational people then scornfully dismiss the energetic impact of attention. They call it placebo. Um, thus ignoring the powerful energy that shapes the organism. Um, we have more and more scientific evidence, for example, that the healing of wounds is promoted by a positive environment. And that the person's <coughs> attitude or the attitude of others, even the presence of animals or plants, all can influence the human organism's healing process. Um, this is explained by contemporary natural science <coughs> using the principle of mass energy equivalence. This also makes it possible for us to understand how a therapeutic relationship or a positive interpersonal atmosphere can be one of the most important resources influencing the client's healing process. Um, once a gentleman told me that this was one of the things he only discovered later in his life. Um, I think he didn't discover it early in his life, because for him it was so natural to be um, positively engaged with another person. So, uh, yesterday someone of, of the Buddhist practice told me, the fish is the last one to notice the water. The water. So, <laughs> I think for gentle it was so natural that he um, had this very a positive interpersonal atmosphere that he didn't notice the importance of it. So, that's it. Um, none of this can take away from the fact that people are sometimes really stuck in their heads, stuck in the mental realm, and unable to seek out and identify the healing experience of living forward in their body. In order to help even these people to learn something from this process, there are already a number of valuable steps that have been developed by several focusing teachers. However, all experienced focusing teachers are aware, in the same way as experienced therapists are, that people may have but quite a number of obstacles in place over the course of their life. Dooming every attempt to make contact with their body felt experience to failure. Um, I'll skip over some parts because you have known stuff. But some people have come to identify themselves with the mind so much to an extent that they have compa Compartmentalize their bodies <laughs> and no longer feel more subtle sensations. The organism is more seen as a machine that can be controlled through rational thought. The mind has taken the upper hand, sidestepping the body, and talking therapy often provides more fodder to their thought processing. It's feeding the thought processing. So I think that at this point that the person needs to be put back in touch with the ability to feel again and reconnect with how it is um, to carry forward another kind of processing. So, and they will never succeed in this endeavor if we are constantly knocking on doors that are closed to their bodily felt experience. Um, here again, I will remind you that an experiential approach supposes a second paradigm shift. And we are often not aware of this huge shift. Chandling actually chose to radically change 
the direction of the working process. Traditionally, the client and the therapist strive to get a grip on an aspect of the client or of the situation. While the experiential approach or the living forward principle focuses, focuses on establishing a connection with the felt aspect in the organism, using that as an inspiration. This is, is a real paradigm shift that is difficult to understand for people who are used to strive to get the grip. So I think we need to be aware that this is, is a game-changing thing. This will become clear as I develop the, as I develop the next question. Okay? Get a grip. Uh, get a hold, get control. Uh, like... Grip. Control. Uh, the way you direct the process, that it, 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 comes, it comes from thinking and controlling. Well, the experiential approach, the, 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 it is directed in the opposite side. It, it comes from here and then it goes that way. This will become clear as I develop the next question. Can I go on with the next question? Yeah. Okay. How can we facilitate the healthy process of working with the life forwards? Energy. This is question three. And one of the facilitative approaches I want to discuss here involves a situation where attention is not actually focused on the body directly. You have heard me? Feel it? <laughs> um, we look for a situation that invites the client to make a detour. And a detour that can act as a shortcut, which surprises the client with a new perspective. Let me illustrate this with a case example. The case is one of my clients is a highly developed intellectual who only believes in the rational. His brain is all that matters in his self-experience. The rest of his body does not exist in a matter of speaking. If I were to allow him to take control of the conversation, our conversation would be limited to discussing and reasoning, and he would only analyze his experiences. The fact that many years of psychoanalysis and various behavioral therapy sessions did not help encouraged me to believe that we needed to take a different approach. However, the client never responds to my invitation to notice something in his body. Instead, he dismissed this as nonsense, as new age psycho blah blah, which he didn't wish to engage in. So after yet another attempt, a failed attempt to make contact on an experiential level during, during our discussions, I once asked him, whether he ever notices nature around him. And he was caught off guard by the unexpectedness of my intervention. For the first time ever, he felt silent. And then he gave me an answer that was quite different from his usual float of words. And he said he found it very strange uh, when a new friend visited him in his home where he had been living for over 20 years and she was pleasantly surprised by the lovely tree near his front door. He had never noticed that tree. <clears throat> So I put in I put this these 
words to him. Your body is also there, like the tree, a living organism that has been growing all this time without you having paid attention to it. These were my words. This reflection uh, touched him. He was, ooh, he was really shocked of his head. <laughs> and um, it literally, literally, for the first time, inspired movement in his body. He felt something in his throat, his chest, his abdomen. And this marked the real turning point in his therapy. And he was, as he was able to notice that bodily felt movement, the living forward in that situation. Um, I'm going to cut the long story short and limit myself to telling you that, much to my surprise, in his new relationship with his body, this new relationship later resulted in an other, rather striking change. I didn't expect a problem. <coughs> After the tree session, he stopped suffering from impotence for the first time in many years when making love to this girlfriend. So, just this living forward of making connection with the tree had more effect than years of psychoanalysis and behavior therapy analyzing his problem with impotence. This is quite surprising. So, so this, cl the, this client's narrow perception of the world, which only included the mental part of him, suddenly opened up because his attention was directed to another situation in which living forward suddenly revealed itself. The session demonstrates how establishing a real, a real felt connection with a wider realm in which natural life forward energy can be vividly perceived is a good option where the living forward experience in an individual has stopped. Um, this is an example of what Jensen describes in his process model as crossing with a new environmental plane brings novelty. So from now on you will always think of this client. <laughs> Since our body is part of nature, it can be very helpful to notice different forms of life in nature. Animals are included here, as shown by the remedial effects of therapy with horses or the proximity of a pet. Um, so, nature demonstrates perfectly so many different life processes which are also present in the human organism. So it opens up the opportunity of crossing examples of living forward from nature to what it is possible to experience as a human being. Um, so we can expand this realm in which personal experiencing unfolds by exploring new situations, new opportunities where life forward energy manifests itself. And here I want to bring your attention to the third paradigm shift. The third paradigm shift is comparable to the breakthrough of positive psychology. In positive psychology, the individual is no longer reduced to his or her problem. And by focusing on living forward, we directly tap into healthy energy. The suffering experienced by the person is acknowledged as something that is part of life. 
and stumbling blocks or problems act like signposts to the organism, which knows what a good life should be like. They point in the direction of a stopped process, which can be made to move forward again by establishing a connection with life forward energy. So this approach which strives for well-being is rather unusual in therapy, which tends to mainly focus on the problem. And Gentling, um, he, he was a positive psychologist long before it became an official scientific term in, in psychology. And you know, I'm sure you know this quote by him, of every bad feeling is potential energy towards a more dry way of being, if you give it space to move towards its rightness. You, you know that famous quote. Um, it was from uh, 81. It's in his book, in his focus book of 81. But uh, the official positive psychology, they, they situated at the beginning of the uh, 20th, uh, at the beginning of 2000, with Seligman and others, and, and um, Sheik Sent Mihai, and all these people. But Jantin was long before them. So, but this principle of looking for the positive tendency or the life forward energy behind problematic behavior or painful, painful feelings was also uh, common among persons sent to therapists. Uh, however, also person-centered therapists, they invest a lot of time in exploring the problem, <coughs> while in the living forward approach, we try instead to make a shortcut to bypass the stumbling blocks and look for new energy by going straight in the direction of living forward. So, we pay more attention to what brings the client alive and not so much to what makes the client block or stuck, okay? Um, I had some discussions with our friends and we, we, dis we, we, we discovered that uh, in focusing workshops, it's very striking how participants that in focusing workshops, they are often surprised by how a direct connection to life energy helps them to swiftly relate to themselves in a pleasant way, as separate from their problems. They often say that this approach in focusing workshop has delivered better results in a short period of time than they have ever experienced in their psychotherapy. So. We can understand this by acknowledging that on an experiential living, on an experiential level, the living forward is there and reaches much further than the problem of particular emotions. So, at, the level, at that level, the person can experience a directly felt contact. Um, so, we could de develop more on that, but I will not do that. I still have 13 minutes around that, and that's all right. The timing is perfect as it always is when you are in connection with the bigger system, everything is perfect. <laughs> so, the, the fourth question, how can bodily felt contact with living for open new perspectives on human development, healing and well-being? Are there more opportunities for establishing contact with life forward energy than we are currently using? And what, what else could we do to open up to our full creative and healing potential? In this context, it's, it's worth remembering that Gently discovered the focusing process in psychotherapy as a way of being with oneself that was already natural to some clients. He then studied how this process is activated in therapy. And as a philosopher, he also delved deeper into the underlying dynamic of this life forwarding process. So he gradually developed this process theory, which instead of just relating to therapy, 
conscience living as a whole. So an individual's relational impact on the other is obviously crucial to the process of experiential change in the therapeutic relationship. And in experiential therapy, besides the interpersonal relationship, the inner relationships also becomes clear and plays a crucial role in the healing process. And this brings us to the next paradigm shift. The next paradigm shift that is difficult for some persons to receive, that is that in an experiential approach, clients are encouraged to refer to their inner felt compass. Clients can then discover to learn how to make best use of their bodily felt knowledge. So, um, rather than the knowledge of the therapist or other authorities. So, it's, it's vital that the client understand this paradigm shift. The paradigm shift that the client understands that um, he, can, he or she can directly experience the fact that he or she himself or herself has the tools to care for his or her own development. And with the living forward principle, we recognize all interactions that involve living. So we, we, this is, is a shift that people don't have to look to the authority or the, the therapist or the, the other person or the theory, whatever. This is a paradigm shift, that they have the tools in themselves. Um, so, Jensen, he um, described several ways living forward processes in which an other person does not play a central role. Uh, thinking at the edge, for example, is, is, is how we explained how a creative <laughs> process can arise out of the interaction of a bodily felt experience and some ideas or a theory, thus bringing new life into ideas instead of these ideas these being, simply being that words. So, and in this respect, as well, Jensen's publications may be a new fruits of time if we do this interaction with the picture <coughs> tour that brings new life to the worlds. Um, Jensen also offers um, this, the same inspiration in his approach to dreams. Um, in his 2012 publication about body dream work, he explains letting the life forward energy actually come in the body is the chief purpose of body dream interpretation. So I will give you some time to sense that quote. And he stresses on multiple occasions that dreams can have a therapeutic life forward value even without the intervention of a therapist or another person. Here again, the process of crossing and the element of surprise in dreams plays a role. Unusual images and movements can break through uh, familiar perspectives and create new openings in narrowed visions. So, the element of surprise is regularly present in Jenkins' work. And during one of the last phone workshops he gave on dreams that were organized by assistance, with assistance of Anne Weiser, I, I participated and, um, 
I, I, I was surprised by an intervention of Gentlin when he said at a certain moment, uh, when he was working with a dream of a participant, he said, we could ask the bigger system. I thought, hmm, what's he saying now? <laughs> it came as a surprise to me that he gave that as, as an invitation. So, um, to, to some extent, this is surprising and also not surprising. Because in his uh, focusing book of uh, 1981, he wrote also about the biggest system. And um, this is the quote from the focusing book, uh, where he wrote, Your physically felt body is in fact part of a gigantic system of here and other places, now and other times, you and other people, in fact, the whole universe. This sense of being bodily alive in a vast, vast system is the body as it is felt from the inside. So, building on or carrying forward, Gentlin's approach implies that we could tap into this Gigantic, gigantic, gigantic potential that we therapists generally approach with a lot of caution and we hesitate to put into words. Uh, however, our bodies, Anthony, can tune into a much wider realm of living forward, and the life forward energy we experience in our body can move far beyond the boundaries of our own body. Animals and plants also have this potential. Uh, studies have shown, for example, that trees can communicate with each other over long distances, ensuring that other trees that are miles away can defend themselves against an attack that is coming. So this is amazing. Isn't it? So uh, Jensen said once about focusing, it stretches the mind. And what I would say is, by paying attention to living forward, it stretches awareness. Uh, it could lead to experiencing of being aware of what is much broader than what was ever realized before. Awareness goes deeper than mindfulness, because it does not limit itself to what the mind notices. Rather, it acknowledges what the body's Anthony can register in connection with a larger field of experiences. Um, so choosing to engage with a much larger experience of living forward can make a world of difference. This implies a choice, um, but at the same time it is also a gradual process of slowly deepening awareness. Um, it allows living forward or the spirit working through you um, instead of the mind. Yeah. This also implies an opening up and an acknowledgement that there is more to life than you know or can understand. And again, um, I have an example that just came to me um, two weeks ago. Um, I, I, I did a walk on the Camino, and this was uh, walking every day, 25 kilom kilometers. And just before I went on that journey, I went to a pedicure to uh, um, give good care to my feet. And um, she made a mistake, um, and she... Her eyes are no, no more that well. She, she's already over 70, but I, I still go to her. And she made a wound under my feet. So, instead of having good care of feet to start the Camino, I had a real bad wound under my feet. And somehow I learned to trust and not worry immediately about, oh, am I going to be able to walk with this wound under my feet. 
And what I, what I did was, let me take seriously my lecture about living forward. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, um, I thought, um, walking is putting my feet time and time again on Mother Earth. Um, is walking apart. Um, and I did, very, I did the walking very meditative. Instead of thinking, oh, uh, my wound hurts, I started thinking with every step, I take in the healing energy, the vitality of Mother Earth. With every step, I take in the healing energy of Mother Earth in my wounded foot. I, I, I receive the healing energy with every step. And I did very meditative walking. And I didn't have any problem in walking. So I was really uh, touched, deeply moved by this potential of, of working with the living forward of nature and, and taking in that energy, that healing energy, instead of focusing on the pain in my food. So, that was just an example that I wanted to tell you also. So here again, we, we, we are in excellent company of contemporary natural scientists who believe that 95% of the events in our universe are completely unknown to us and that we have no idea how they affect us. Uh, Stephen Hawkins, who recently died, he was convinced that the essence of everything would gradually be revealed thanks to natural sciences. So uh, the contemporary natural sciences distances itself from the old mechanical view on matter. Quantum physics, for example, has proved by different experiments that non-locality and non-objectivity are part of our reality. It has demonstrated that light particles and light waves are intelligent and that they influence the structure of matter, or they influence the, the, the body. So, to expand or, and to develop our human ability to tap in the positive energy of the bigger system, um, traditionally forms of meditation or prayer have been used by human beings. But I think that we have now a new stage where uh, trusting through direct experience that our body is part of this larger realm of living forward, of unity, of creation, um, we can literally be touched by this transpersonal life forward energy, as I illustrated with my experience on the Camino, with, with the wound on my foot. We can also experience that life forward energy can move out of the physical body. We can receive things that come together in an unusual way, a signs of a great connection that we might have been aware of. I will skip over because um, there's so much to say about this. But for now, for now, I want uh, to say that um, the energy in these higher regions gradually becomes more difficult to pinpoint in material forms that we can observe with our senses. However, the human being has the bodily felt ability to notice and use this subtle energy. And sometimes it requires, this uh, requires training to achieve this shift and expand the scope of our consciousness in the same way that learning to focus it and deepening the reach of our bodily felt experiences also requires training. And also in the same way as each of us learn to trust the living forward that can develop from a felt sense, we can also learn to trust the living forward that develops from making connection to the bigger system. But more than training, this requires a change in mindset again. This means moving away from the biased assumption that only those things that can be counted, measured, 
observe that our senses really exist. So we must be open to and expand our attention to forms of energy that extend beyond the realm of our current knowledge and things we can explain. And this is again a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift where we incorporate that this kind of expanded consciousness in, uh, can be part of our experiential approach. Um, that we can acknowledge that transpersonal sources, the bigger system, contribute to human development and well-being. Uh, I have often noticed that many of our colleagues consider this shift a bridge too far, as my, my good friend and colleague who, who said to me, Mia, don't take in that spiritual part of us. Don't do that. For her, it was a bridge too far. Um, so it has always puzzled me that humanity scholars seem to have more difficulty accepting this transition than their counterparts in the exact science. Um, however, for Gentling, this extension was the next logical step. Uh, he had this chapter in the, in the famous handbook of uh, psychiatry about the newer therapies. And there he wrote a chapter on the human being in the universe. And he wrote there in that chapter about the human being in the universe, religious, spiritual, or cosmic sensitivity is the next logical extension of the movement branching out from the individual to groups, family, and society. There is a dimension even greater than society, the universe or cosmos. In the current trends, this is not a matter of belief Rather, it is the bodily experience of sensing oneself in a vast cosmic context. It is the experience of breathing more deeply, of having a sense of vastness. So, um, once you have experienced this first hand, arguments no longer matter. Or felt experience strengthens the idea that connecting with the living forward, with, with, which permeates our universe, will get us much further than we can understand and influence from our limited eye. Finding the right words to express this mystery will always be difficult. And our words will never quite be enough. Uh, Einstein he said, uh, the unknown things in nature, we can call that God. Um, Others use the word spirit to refer to that kind of energy. Uh, you can also call it the unnameable or the unknown. Uh, personally, I prefer to speak or to think of pure energy, um, which can manifest itself in various forms. Um, I consider the human body to be one of the many forms in which life expresses itself. I experience the body is an environment in which living forward is manifested. I gently write, writes, the body structure is not only made but also maintained by ongoing processes. If they stop, the body disintegrates. The body is process concrete designed. It's a record, an action track. So pure qualities can manifest itself in human beings in, uh, in, in qualities of love, compassion, wisdom, peace, wonder, surrender. These all happen to be qualities where I expand my limit I, where I allow um, to establish a connection with everything that is, and where I cultivate this consciousness of a vast unity. So I can finish um, with an existential well-being approach. 
the physical, the interpersonal, the inner and the transpersonal aspects of experiencing come together in an interwoven process where different aspects of living forward reveal themselves, take turns in coming to the fore. And this model transcends culture, it transcends specific religions, it transcends um, specific beliefs. It's just a natural thing. Uh, and it embraces Eastern and Western traditions and it welcomes all kinds of beliefs. So, because, um, no, I'll skip that. Um, in an existential well being approach, people learn to notice all living forward interactions. So, by expanding their awareness <laughs> to the physical, the interpersonal, the inner, the transpersonal forms of expression, they can develop their full potential as human beings. So, let me end with an invitation to continue the living forward process in interaction with Jensen's amazing legacy and our own experience and our many changing life contexts because that will guarantee that Jensen's legacy brings new fruits out in the world every, in every place of the world. I thank you for being so room with your silent attention without putting up a red card or whatever. <laughs> thank you.